Today in the Educated Barfly, we're going to show you how to take that ski vacation to the next level. And some of you guys might not be going on a ski vacation, so we're going to help you take that Netflix on the couch watching to the next level. Let's get into it. My name's Leandro Demon Riva. This is The Educated Barfly. This guy's attitude takes away from enjoying this video. Let's get into making the cocktail. Today's cocktail is called a Vert Chaud, which literally translates to hot green in French. It is the combination of green chartreuse and hot chocolate, which is one of the best things ever. It is a perfect, perfect, perfect holiday cocktail. And uh, because it's such a simple cocktail, I decided we're gonna be making a hot chocolate from scratch. And so this whole video is gonna be me making the hot chocolate and showing you how to do that and then adding some booze to it. All right, so first thing you're gonna need is a pan and a cooktop of some kind. We're gonna turn it on and put it on medium heat. It's already on medium heat. Uh, and then we're just gonna add three cups of milk to it, like so. Try not to spill. So when you add your chocolate in, you wanna make sure you're using high quality chocolate. You can get a chocolate bar and cut it up. Just make sure that it's semi-sweet. I like to use these little chocolate drops that just melt a lot easier. We're doing eight ounces or 270 grams of chocolate into the milk. So once the milk starts to steam and gets a little hot, you're gonna to wanna to start whisking as the chocolate melts and just continually whisk it, helping that chocolate to combine into the milk. What do you call the stuff that uh, solidifies on the top of the milk? What do you call the stuff that solidifies on the top of the milk? You know, like when you the just- milk fat? No, like when you cook milk. Yeah, it's, it, it, Is it, isn't yeah. that milk fat that like solidifies? Is there a word for it? Uh, skin, I think it's called skin. Uh, I think that it's literally, they call it like uh, like milk skin. Hmm. Um, it's gross. Nobody likes it. I know. I know all those things about it. Um, well, it is disgusting. We're making hot chocolate at home and uh, I keep calling it snurk. You keep calling it what? Snurk. Snurk? Snurk. The milk fat stuff? Yeah. The, the, the milk skin? That's why we call it in Norwegian, snurk. Snurk? Hmm. Oh, now I want to see if there's like an American... Word for snurk? Word for snurk. Um, milk snurk. Word for snark? No. Lactoderm uh, refers to a sticky film of protein that forms on top of dairy milk and foods containing dairy milk, such as hot chocolate and some soups. Unsourced material may be challenged. Uh, yeah, so milk skin. It's called milk skin. Okay. You think we're gonna get some milk skin? It's milk snark. Milk snark? Mm. Snark? Should we call this vert? Vert snark? Vert snark. Vert snurg, so that means like uh, green milk skin. <laughs> Would you say that this has thickened slightly? It seems like it, right? Maybe. I think this is like reduced down enough. I mean, it's like very frothy. Smells good. All right, I think that I'm gonna call it. All right, so we're gonna take it off heat. Back to the making of hot chocolate. So we're going to heat up our water so that we can heat up our glass. But in the meantime, we're gonna take three tablespoons of brown sugar, I'll put it in there, and we're gonna take just a pinch of sea salt, put it in there, give it the old whiskey until everything dissolves. What does um, Joshua Weissman say? Give it the whiskey business? We're gonna give it a little whiskey business? Oh, I don't know. That's what he says. We're gonna give it the whiskey, I think that's what he says. All right, that's it. I think that's good and dissolved, don't you? I'm gonna take our glass and put it here. First we have to, because right now if we put it in there, it could just shatter. Well, I mean, it's not- It might shatter anyway. Yeah, I mean, you're putting boiling water in. It's this, the chocolate's not hotter than the boiling water. That's true. That's true, good point. Uh-huh. There's a little bit of holes in my logic here. This isn't boiling water though. Oh, not yet. It, no, it, it doesn't quick. boil. I don't think these things don't make it boil. It's not. It's not boiling temperature. Yeah, it makes it hot, but it's not boiling temperature. It is. That's when it goes clink. It's boiling. I don't think it's boiling temperature. I don't think it like brings it to a, like a full boil. Mm, I think it brings it up to just at the point where it's gonna boil, and then it stops. All my water heaters bring it to a boil. 
I mean, it is like, you know, bubbling a little, a little simmers. I don't know, possibly, we'll see. I wonder if this is gonna, I think it's gonna be fine. Anyway, you wanna heat your glass up because you don't wanna pour hot things into a cold glass just because the cold glass will, will make the drink cold and you want it to be hot. It's, it's freaking hot chocolate. You might, I mean, also like there is something to be said, like even though I'm using this glass because I think it's like more elegant looking and I think it will give it like a good thumbnail and everything. There is something to be said for insulated glasses that are also gonna keep it like a double walled glass or even the other, like this glass is just like thicker. It's just like thicker mm -hmm. uh, glass and it's going to make, it's gonna keep it hotter for longer. So I don't know, use an insulated glass. Don't don't listen to me. I'm, I'm doing this purely for visuals, but it's YouTube, okay? So well, that fell. Heat our glass for a little bit. Okay. It's hot. Take our green chartreuse. We're gonna be putting two ounces of our green chartreuse in there. All right, I'm a bit of a disaster pouring from pans into small glasses, so I put it into a here. And we're just gonna add in hot chocolate and then we're just going to top it up with a little cream like so just give it a taste shall we oh my god there's nothing better than that that is so good it is all of the flavors of that alpine liqueur it's all of those different botanicals chartreuse is such a hard flavor profile to describe it is you know kind of anise forward, but very floral. It has almost a pine quality to it. Like, uh, what is that? Like an evergreen quality to it, which is really nice. Like when someone calls it Alpine, that's what it tastes like. It, 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 it tastes like what you would imagine the like Alpine regions would smell like, I think. Just all of those flowers and botanicals. So just like imagine those flavor profiles combined with all of the hot chocolate and that sort of kind of sweet, creamy hot chocolate. And, and you have like the perfect winter after ski drink right there. I don't ski, but uh, after snowboard drink, Apre snowboard. Apre sit around and eat a uh, an Italian sub with this in the lodge. That's more my style. And you got the cream on top. It's just so decadent. I was first introduced to this drink uh, by a good friend named Ria Soleil, who was the brand ambassador for Chartreuse. And during the holidays, she would come by my bar with a little thermos and she would pour me some Chartreuse hot chocolate. It was fantastic. Um, and I want you guys to have the same for the holidays. This is a very nice just after dinner drink. So there you go, the Vert Chaud. First and foremost, I wanna thank our patrons and YouTube members that help make this channel possible. You guys are amazing, and all of the great work we're doing is enabled by you guys. You are our enablers, but in the best way. Uh, also check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for uh, recipes, articles, our virtual bottle program. Um, and also don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified every time we drop a video, and I will see you guys on another time. And then Leandro's gonna make a big mess. Yep, made a big mess. Luckily, that's why we have rags. <laughs>